The Mystery Presents. Someone left a package on the bench. I wonder what's inside. It has a bow on it. That means it must be a present for someone. But who? Is there a card on it? That will tell us who it's for. Nope. No card. Busy Town Action Bug News! Goldbug here for Busy Town Action News. Reporting live from the trolley stop where a misplaced present has left Huckle with a curious question. That's right, Goldbug. Who is this present for? That's a mystery. And we are going to solve it. Yay! Mystery! Ready for it? Here goes! Who, what, why, how? Who, what, when, where, why, how? Who, what, why, how? Who, what, when, where, why, how? Everybody! Who, what, when, where, why, how? Solve a mystery! as Huckle and his team try to solve the case of the mystery present. I'm Goldbug, and that's the buzz in Busy Town. Goldbug, out! Let's open it up so we can see what's inside. Here, I'll be the scissors. Snip, snip. Then we might be able to tell who it's for. Lily, you can't open someone else's present. That's right. You wouldn't want to spoil their birthday surprise. Hmm. You just gave me an idea, Hilda. If we find out who's having a birthday party today, then maybe we'll find out who the mystery present is for. But Busy Town is a big place, Huckle. Where do we start looking for a birthday party? Look, there's a balloon. Birthday parties always have balloons. Good eye, Sally. The balloon came from that direction. So let's go that way and try to find a party. Come on. Looks like it might be a birthday party. Balloons, ribbons, a driveway full of cars. I think you're right, Sally. Let's go see. Ah! Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, Gary! Yep, it's a birthday party. We found it! Bingo! This is the place. <gasps> Yay! Yay! Gary! Okay, who likes chocolate cake? I love it. Do you know them? I know them. That's Huckle and Sally. And Loli and Hilda. <laughs> Don't worry. We're not here to join the party. But we wish you a happy birthday anyway, Gary. <laughs> we're trying to solve a mystery. Right. We found this present at the trolley stop, and we're trying to find out who it's for. Are you missing a birthday present? Gee, I don't know. I'll tell you if there's a present missing. No, you won't. I will. One, two, three, four, five presents. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six kids. Yep, someone did forget to bring the present. Thanks, Huckle. Hey, wait a minute, Pig Wump. You don't count Gary. He's the one getting the presents. Oops, sorry. I guess we're not missing a present after all. Thanks anyway. Well, since it doesn't belong to Gary, we need to find someone else who's having a birthday. Oh, we'd better do it soon. I don't think I can wait much longer to find out what's inside. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what's inside. Uh, uh, it sounds like a rattlesnake. Here, you take it. I don't want it. You take it. You take it. No, you take it. You. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, guys. Nobody would give someone a rattlesnake for a birthday present. How do you know it's a birthday present? Well, it has this big bow, and it's wrapped in fancy paper. So I just figured it must be a birthday present. But it might not be. Hey, I never noticed this before. 
What, what do you say, Uncle? What? Look at the design on the wrapping paper. It's baby stuff. There's a baby bottle and a baby buggy. This must be a gift for a baby. Exactly. And where are babies born? The, the Busy Town Hospital. Hospital. Right. Maybe someone there can tell us who just had a baby. Come on, team. To the hospital. Aren't you going to stay for some birthday cake? <laughs> well, since you asked, just a small slice would be nice. Come on, Hilda. We've got a mystery to solve. Save me a piece. I'll be back. <laughs> Help you kids? We found a present for a baby, but we don't know which baby. Have any babies been born in Busy Town lately? <laughs> As a matter of fact, yes. It's been a busy week at Busy Town Hospital. Have a look. Oh boy, that's a lot of babies. Solving this mystery just got a little more complicated. How will we ever figure out which baby to give this present to? Loli's right. We're all out of clues, Huckle. Unless we take a peek at what's inside. A quick snip is all it takes. No, Loli, we can't open the present. Ah. Uh, what's that you've got there? Come and see. Is that a picture of bones, Dr. Lion? Yes, this is my patient's arm. I took an x-ray to see if a bone was broken. But it looks just fine. An x-ray? Yes, that's right. An x-ray machine takes special pictures. It lets me see right inside of someone's body. Whoa! That's so wow. cool! It takes pictures of what's inside? Yep. Hmm. Do you think the x-ray machine could take a picture of what's inside this present? I don't see why not. Here, let's give it a try. That x-ray machine wouldn't show any bones inside me. Why not? <laughs> because I don't have any. Hmm, <laughs> <laughs> that's interesting. What is oh, it? Can we see Dr. Lion? It looks like candy apples. Two of them. Newborn babies can't eat candy apples, Lily. They don't have any teeth yet. Hmm. Those aren't candy apples. They're baby rattles. That's ah, so that's that. what's inside. No wonder the present rattled when Pig Will shook it. But why would a baby need two rattles? <laughs> to make twice as much noise. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Two rattles. Hmm. <gasps> Dr. Lion, can I take a look at those baby pictures again? Sure thing, Huckle. Bug here, whew, with an exciting news update. Huckle, have you figured out who this mystery present is for? I think so, Ghoulbug. Look. All the mothers have one baby. Except for her. She has twins. Two babies, two rattles. Right, oh. of course. Hmm. Mrs. P. Porcupine, room 216. Come on, team. We have a present to deliver. Thanks. Thank thanks. you. Yeah, thanks. You're welcome. Oh, how silly of me. I had a gift for the babies when I left home, but I must have lost it on my way to the hospital. <sighs> Is this it? <gasps> oh, my present. You found it. I wonder what this could be. <laughs> <laughs> It's a pair of rattles. Why, thank you, Mrs. Raccoon. You're welcome. And thank you, children. You're, You're welcome. welcome! Well, it looks like Huckle and his team have wrapped up the case of the mystery present. Or should I say, unwrapped. Huckle, how did you figure it out? Well, here's what happened. 
we noticed that the wrapping paper had baby stuff on it. So we went to the hospital to find out if any babies had been born lately. Dr. Lion took an x-ray and we saw two baby rattles inside the present. Mrs. Porcupine had just had twins, so I figured this present was for her twin babies. Hooray for Huckle! Everybody all together solved a mystery with Huckle. You can solve one too. And hooray for the best team in Busytown! <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Those babies are loud! Oh dear. Now what do I do? <laughs> Maybe these will help. <laughs> now that's a gift we can all enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> A smudged letter mystery. for the school. That's a lot of car to wash. Can we help? I love washing cars. No, you don't. I love washing cars. <laughs> Sounds like you both love washing cars. So you can both help. Can you bring me the hose? I'll get it. No, I'll get it. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> ah! Hi, Pigwheel. Hello, <laughs> I'll hold the hose. No, I'll hold the hose. I will. No, I will. Well, <laughs> hey! Whoa! Watch out! <laughs> no me! No me! No me! What's going on? Whoops! What are you doing? You're supposed to wash my car, not me. Sorry, Mr. Grongo. Why is he wearing a party hat? I don't know. I don't think he's having a party. Hmm. That's odd. I got the hose! Hey! Hi, kids. Mine! 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 Sorry, Postman Pig. Oh, that's all right. Oh, no. What's wrong? <gasps> Look at this. The water smudged the address, and I can't read it now. I don't know who to deliver this letter to. Oh, that's not good. I know. You could open it up to see who it's for. Oh, no. I can't do that, Pig Won't. It's against the law to open other people's mail. Oh. I know. You can look at the return address on the envelope. What's that? The return address tells you who sent the letter. If you know who sent it, we can ask them who the letter is for. It's a good idea, Huckle. But look, I can't read the return address either. It's smudged too. Oh dear, I don't know who wrote this letter. Hmm. Well, that sounds to me like... A mystery! We'll solve it for you! Busy Town Action Bug News! Goldbug here on the Busy Town Beat. What's the buzz in Busy Town, Huckle? Well, Postman Pig needs to deliver this letter, but he doesn't know who it's for or who wrote it. We're going to find out who wrote the mystery letter. Ready for it? Here it goes!
it here first, folks. Will Huckle and the gang solve the smudged letter mystery? Stay tuned to find out. Goldbug, out! All right, you can take this letter for now, but I need to get it back soon so I can deliver it today. I'll meet you back here when I finish my rounds at 5 o'clock. Okay, see you later. We don't have much time to solve this mystery. And we have to hurry so we can finish washing Mr. Grunkle's car. So we'd better get cracking. Let's see if we can get any clues from this letter. <laughs> Whoever sent it sure likes polka dots. Yup, that's our first clue. Aha! And here's another clue. A red mark. Well, I wonder what it is. Tomato sauce, maybe? Or red paint? Or strawberry jam! <laughs> oh, no! It's our Aunt Flory! We've got to hide! Why are you hiding? She looks nice. She's too nice. She's always hugging us and kissing us. Yuck! Her perfume makes me dizzy. Oh. <laughs> oh. I spy my two favorite nephews. <laughs> no! <laughs> Cutie wooties! You're both so adorable. It seems like just yesterday you were in diapers. Ta-ta! Bye, Aunt Flory. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like you two could use the hose to wash off that lipstick. What's that smell? It smells like flowers. What kind of flowers? I'm not sure. We should find out what kind of flowers it smells like. That might be another good clue to who wrote the letter. So, we need to go to a place with lots of flowers. To the flower shop. Smells so pretty here. Mm. <laughs> None of these flowers smell like that letter, though. And I can't figure out why the letter would smell like flowers anyway. Sometimes people smell like flowers when they put on perfume. Yeah, like Aunt Flory! That's it. The person who wrote the letter was wearing flowery perfume, and it rubbed off on the letter. That's why the letter smells like flowers. Hey, that's a good clue. Five o'clock. <gasps> Our time is almost up. We've got to go and meet Postman Pig. I hope we can solve this before he's finished his rounds. Okay, let's go over our clues. One. The person who wrote this letter likes polka dots. Two, the person who wrote this letter was wearing flowery perfume. Three, the person who wrote this letter left a red smudge on it. We never did figure out what that red smudge was. Huh? Uh-oh, here comes Postman Pig. You won't solve the mystery in time. Yes, he will. No, he won't. Uh-huh. Hello, my cutie wooties. Ew. Ew. Yuck. What could this red mark be? <laughs> so, Huckle, do you know who wrote that letter? Yes, Postman Pig. I believe I do. It sounds like we may have the answer to our mystery, folks. Uncle, how did you figure it out? Well, Goldbug, here's how we figured it out. 
At the flower shop, we realized that the letters smelled like flowers because sometimes people wear flowery perfume. Then, when Aunt Flory kissed Pig Will and Pig Won't, she left red lipstick marks on their skin that looked just like the red mark on the letter. She also really likes polka dots. When we put the clues together, they all pointed to Aunt Flory. It was you who wrote this letter. My goodness, I certainly did. You did it, Hucko. Mystery solved. Everybody all together solved a mystery with Hucko. You can solve one, two. Hooray for Hucko! Aunt Flory, can you tell us who this letter is for? It's a card from Mr. Gronkle. It's his birthday today. Oh, that's why he was wearing a party hat. Then allow me to deliver it to him. What do you want? Special delivery. Hmm. Birdies will sing and bunnies will play on this your very special day. Sugar is sweet and honey is too, but nothing is as sweet as you. Birthday, Mr. Gronkle. Happy birthday, Mr. Gronkle! Thank you, everybody. I didn't think anyone would remember. Now, get off my driveway and come inside for some cake. <laughs> <laughs> Did someone say cake? You and me saw the mystery. You won't have to pick any from this tree. They all fell off. <gasps> Are you saying that the cherries only fell off of one tree? Yep, and I can't figure out why. Well, if you ask me, that sounds like a mystery. Busy Town Action Bug News. Goldbug here for Busy Town Action News, covered in. Mmm, delicious cherry juice. I'm reporting live from Farmer Patrick Pig's orchard where hundreds of ripe red cherries have mysteriously fallen from this tree. Huckle, any idea what's behind this? Not yet, Goldbug, but I do know one thing. My team and I are going to solve the falling cherry mystery. Yay! Yay! Ready for it? Here goes! <gasps>
Will Huckle and his team solve the falling cherry mystery? Stay tuned for exciting, tasty, fresh updates. I'm Goldbug, and that's the buzz in Yummy Town. I mean, Busy Town. Goldbug out. Well, I'd better get a ladder so we can reach the cherries on the other trees. Hmm. Okay, guys, let's think. What could have made all these cherries fall to the ground? Hmm. Do you think a big gust of wind might have blown the cherries off the tree, Huckle? I don't think so, Sally. Why not? Well, if it was the wind, all the other trees would have lost their cherries, too. Oh, right. I know. Maybe this tree was struck rip by lightning! Wow! Cool light show, Loli. Oh, thanks. Hmm. That's an interesting idea, Loli. But lightning comes from dark storm clouds. True. And there haven't been any storm clouds around lately. Hey! Look up there at the top of the tree. What's that pink thing? Hey! Maybe it's a clue. I know one way to find out. Time to do a little branch bouncing! Yay! Yay! <laughs> Yay! Up he goes! Yay. Go, Lily! Going up! Aha! <laughs> Yay! Thanks, Lily! No problem. Hmm. A piece of pink cloth. It looks ripped on the edges. You're right, Sally. It was definitely torn from something. But what? And how did it get caught at the top of the tree? Uh-huh. We're rather clever at solving things. May we have a look, please? Okay. This came from someone's jacket. It would have to be someone as tall as that tree. A giant, probably. Don't be silly, Pigwill. This cloth was torn off someone's cape. Likely a flying superhero. Don't be ridiculous. Superheroes only exist in comic books. Well, giants are only in fairy tales. I don't think so, Big Won't. I saw one last week. No, you didn't. Oh, yes, I did. No, you didn't. Did? <laughs> no, you didn't. Well, are those two aren't you? We should try to find out where this pink cloth really came from. It might be a clue about why all the cherries fell off the tree. Good idea. So we're looking for something made of pink cloth. With a hole torn in it, right? Right. A hole the same size as this. Let's get busy, town team. We're yeah. on it. Let's roll. have a hole in it the same size as the piece we found. Hey, there's another piece of pink cloth on that bush over there. That's just like the piece tangled on the clothesline. Hmm. Interesting. Clothes are knocked off the clothesline, and this bush is knocked down. Maybe these pink bows had something to do with how everything got knocked over. What was that? Look, a pink kite! With pink bows! And a hole in it! That must be where this piece of cloth came from! Let's go see! Oh, no! It's gone! Follow that kite! <laughs> My hat! <laughs> there it goes! Come on! Watch your step! 
fabric's right, the color's right. And it fits the hole perfectly. That means this kite must have been caught in Farmer Patrick's cherry tree. But how did a little pink kite knock down all those cherries? <gasps> oh, with a lot of shaking, just like it's doing now. Does that mean we solved the falling fruit mystery, Huckle? Not yet, Lily. <laughs> the mystery's not solved until we find out who's pulling that kite string. Come on. Hilda? Hey, hi, guys. Having kite problems, Hilda? Not since I got this super-duper unbreakable kite string. Now I'll never lose my kite, no matter what it gets caught on. Look what we have! Hey, where'd you find that piece of my kite? Stuck at the top of Farmer Patrick's cherry tree. Oh, so that's what happened. I was flying my kite near his orchard, and it got stuck on something, but I didn't know what. I was too far away to see. I had to yank really hard to get it unstuck. Now we have the answer to our mystery. Huh? What mystery? Goldbug here with an exciting news update. Huckle and his team have solved the falling cherry mystery. Huckle, how did you figure it out? Well, Goldbug, here's what happened. First, we found the piece of pink cloth in the cherry tree. Then we compared it to the other pink cloths around Busytown and found Hilda's kite. It had a hole in it that was the same size as the cloth from the cherry tree. Hilda had been pulling on her kite string so hard, she had knocked all the cherries off the tree. Hooray for Hucka! And hooray for the best team in Busytown! Everybody all together solved a mystery with Hucka! What a tasty tidbit of news. And that reminds me, are there any more of those delicious cherries under that tree? Oh, no. It was all my fault. I have to go and apologize to Farmer Patrick. Bye. Wait for us. I'm sorry, Farmer Patrick. I didn't know that pulling on my kite string was shaking your cherry tree. <laughs> That's all right. It's easier to pick the cherries off the ground than to get them by climbing up my ladder. Over here, kids, I could use some help. Oh, no! The kite is stuck again! Don't worry, Sally. This time, I put the kite in the cherry tree on purpose. Here, everyone take a corner of this sheet. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, Hilda, get ready to yank. Oh, it's raining, Jerry! Look at those balls! Hilda, using your kite string has made cherry picking easier than ever before. Thanks so much. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> the Dragon Hunters. Dragon. What else could it be, Huckle? That I don't know. Busy Town Action Bug News! Goldbug here reporting live for Busy Town News. This reporter has just learned about eyewitness accounts of a fire breathing dragon roaming the streets of Busy Town. Huckle, can you tell us what you know? Well, Goldbug, 
pig will and pig won't hurt or roar. It might be a dragon, but we don't know for sure. Whoa! That sounds to me like you have... A mystery to solve! right on. Yay! Ready for it? Here it goes! <gasps> Huckle and his team solve the mystery of the fire-breathing dragon? That's the burning question. I'll stay hot on the trail of this news story. And that's the buzz in Busy Town. Goldbug out. Let's see if this dragon of yours left any clues. Come on. As soon as we heard the ferocious roar, I hid behind some boxes. And I hid behind the garbage bags. Hmm. Hmm. What boxes? And what garbage bags? There's nothing here. Um, hey, that's weird. Where did the garbage go? It was here before. <gasps> the dragon must have eaten it. Oh, no. He must be a very hungry dragon. Maybe he'll eat us. at first. <laughs> There's still smoke in the air. See? We told you! It's the fire-breathing dragon! Where would a fire-breathing dragon come from? Maybe it escaped from the zoo. <laughs> or the pet shop. <laughs> there aren't any dragons in zoos or pet shops. I think we need more information on dragons. It's time for a visit to the library. So many books about dragons. <gasps> this one is all about a green dragon with pink polka dots. Mine is about a pink dragon with green polka dots. Oh, this one is about a flying dragon that gives wishes away. But only if you pull his tail first. I found one, Huckle. It's about invisible dragons. Hey, that must be the kind we saw. You mean the kind we didn't see? An invisible dragon. Hold on, you two. There's no such thing as an invisible dragon. Is too. Sally just found a book about one. But it's just a fairy tale, like all of these books. What we need is a book with real information about real dragons. Hmm. There's someone who can help us, the librarian. Excuse me, could you help us find something, please? That's why I'm here. What are you looking for? We're looking for a book with real information about real dragons. Why don't you look in a dictionary? See what it says under dragon. Dictionary! Good idea. Thank you. Hmm. Dragon will be under D. A, B, C, D. I found it. Dragon. An imaginary creature that looks like a large, fire-breathing reptile. Imaginary? That's what this dictionary says. The dragons are imaginary. That means they're not real. But dragons have to be real. We saw one. Actually, we didn't see one. We only saw a shadow. Maybe it wasn't a dragon who made the shadow. Maybe it was something else. But how do we find out what it was? With a camera. I have a plan. Come on, I'll show you. OK, this is how my plan works. Watch this. Pretend I'm the dragon, or whatever it is. 
When I step near the garbage, my legs will press against this wire and... Ta-da! The ferocious beast takes a picture of himself. That's so clever, Hucko. <laughs> and your dragon roar was really good. Mm, it wasn't that good. It should be more like this. Roar! No, Pigwill, that's not it. Listen carefully. See? Look closely. See that face in there? Mr. Fix-It? Since Mr. Fix-It was in the picture, he must have seen the dragon. And the dragon must have seen him. And the dragon was really hungry. <gasps> maybe the dragon ate Mr. Fix-It. Or maybe Mr. Fix-It got away. I sure hope so. Let's go to his house and see. Come on. Uh-oh. He's not home! The dragon got him! <laughs> Did you hear that? Sounds like Mr. Fix-It is in his workshop. Let's go check. Ew! Do you smell that? <laughs> Ew. Hey, yo! Stinky! It's coming from that thing. I wonder what that's for. Look at that shadow on the wall. <gasps> hey, I've seen that before. <laughs> yeah! I've heard that before. Run! Yeah! Help! It's got me! Don't worry, Pig won't. We'll save you. We just need to figure out how to... Oh, dear. My new garbage truck thought you were garbage. You're your new you garbage truck? Yep. I was just making a few adjustments to the robot arm that does all the heavy garbage lifting. Now watch this! Wow! Wow! Thank you! This is going to make garbage collecting and recycling a lot easier. We should give it a name. I know what you should call your invention. The dragon. The dragon. That's perfect. Dragon the garbage truck. <laughs> this is Goldbug reporting live from Mr. Fix-It's workshop. Huckle, can you give us the facts about the mysterious fire-breathing dragon? Well, Goldbug, here's what happened. First, Pig Will and Pig Won't heard a fire-breathing dragon roaring. Then we all saw its shadow eating garbage. We went to the library and learned dragons are imaginary creatures. So we tried to take the creature's picture, but all we could see was Mr. Fix-It in some smoke. We discovered the dragon was his latest invention, a new garbage truck. <laughs> It doesn't breathe fire, but it does have bad breath. <laughs> Everybody all together solved a mystery with Huckle. You can solve one too. Hooray for Huckle! And that's the <coughs> buzz in Busy Town. <coughs>
the disappearing swimming hole. Water is left in the rain barrel, Sally. That's it, Huckle. It's empty. Boy, it's hot today. I hope you both are ready to cool off at the swimming hole. We sure are, Lily. Now that we've finished watering the flowers. They needed it, too. They were all droopy this morning, and now they're standing straight and tall. Well, this heat has me drooping, too. So let's get to that swimming hole. Look how droopy those poor corn stalks are. Hey, look! That's Farmer Patrick Pig's corn. His corn stalks aren't droopy. Hmm. That's odd. You're right. But I'm really going to be drooping if we don't hurry up and get cooled off in that swimming hole. <laughs> look! It's Mr. Rabbit's car. I guess the bunny family's here to swim in the swimming hole, too. Hey! It looks like they're leaving. And they're looking kind of sad. Sorry to have to tell you, but there's not going to be any swimming today. No swimming? How come? The swimming hole is gone. Gone? But how can that be? <gasps> well, there's a hole, but nothing in it to swim in. What happened to all the water? Just yesterday, it was full of water. There one day, gone the next. Now that's a mystery. Busy Town Action Bug News. Gold Bug here near Farmer Patrick's farm, where things are starting to really heat up on another mystery. What can you tell us about it, Huckle? Well, Gold Bug, all the water from the swimming hole has disappeared, and I'm going to figure out where it went and solve the missing water mystery. Sounds like you're going to splash right into this watery mystery, Huckle. Am I right? You bet. Ready for it? Here it to stay tuned for important news updates on this thirst-quenching mystery. Goldbug out! I'm so thirsty, I could drink two bottles of water. Well, I'm very thirsty, so I could drink three bottles of water. Yeah? Well, I'm extra thirsty, so I could drink four bottles of water. Whoa! Somebody must have been very, very extra, extra thirsty. They drank all the water in the swimming hole. <laughs> <laughs> Relax, guys. I don't think anybody could drink that much water. A giant could. A very extra thirsty giant. Maybe in a storybook. But I think the water that was here disappeared some other way. The question is, how? Look, there's something sticking out near the bottom. You're right, Loli. It looks like the end of a great big straw. A giant sized straw, just the right size for a giant! Ah, uh, there are no giants. And it's not a straw. <laughs> it's a metal pipe. And if we could find the other end, I bet we'd find where the water went. I will find the other end. No, you won't. You're too thirsty. I'll find it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what do you know? Pig Won't stumbled over the rest of the pipe. See? Told you I would. Now we can follow the pipe along to the other end. Let's go! Are you okay, Lolly? What happened? Uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm fine, Sally. The pipe went back into the ground. Oh, now we'll never find out where the water went. Hmm. Yes, we will. Look over there. 
The pipe comes back up over there. Come on, let's check it out. All clear, guys. Let's go. Hmm. If the water did go through this pipe, this is where it came out. But then where did it go, Hucko? I don't know, Loli. Hey, it's Farmer Patrick Pig. Maybe he knows where the water went. Never mind, Sally. I think I might know where all the water went. Me too. Me three. Where? Well, that's a truck that carries bottled water. Right? Right. I bet the bottled water guy took all the water from the swimming hole and used it to fill his bottles. Good thinking, Wooly. Come on, let's follow that bottled water truck. All the water from our swimming pool disappeared. And we were wondering if maybe you filled your bottles with it. <laughs> well, I can assure you we don't fill our bottles with water that anyone's been swimming in. <laughs> Come on, I'll show you. We only use water that's sparkling clean and fresh. Water that's been pumped up from deep under the ground. Well, I guess that means you didn't take the water from our swimming hole. Nope, not me. Well, thanks for showing us your factory. And sorry for the trouble. No trouble. Help yourselves do a few bottles of water on your way out. You must be super thirsty on a hot day like today. Really? Thanks. Cool. Yes, we are. I'm very extra thirsty. I'm extra very thirsty. I'm so thirsty I can drink two bottles. I'm so thirsty I can drink three bottles. Well, Hucko, if the bottled water guy didn't take the water from the swimming hole, what happened to it? I'm not sure, Luli. Hey, firefighters use water to put out fires, right? Right. Maybe the firefighters used the water from the swimming hole to put a fire out. Good thinking, Sally. Come on, let's go to the fire station and check it out. Five bottles. Six bottles. Wait for us! Well, Sally, our fire truck can pump water from swimming pools, rivers, and lakes if a fire hydrant isn't around. Uh, swimming holes, too, I guess. But we didn't pump the water from your swimming hole. As a matter of fact, there hasn't been a fire in Busytown for a long time. Then why were you racing around in the fire truck? <laughs> we went out to get some cold lemonade. Would you like a glass? Oh, oh yeah. Sure. Oh, yeah. So I'm so thirsty. Party. Not for us. No, thanks. Uh, does the fire station have a bathroom? <clears throat> thanks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if the bottled water guy didn't take the water and the firefighters didn't take the water, who did? Maybe if we go back to where the pipe from the swimming hole ended, we can find a clue that will help us answer that question. Wait, Wait for us! We have to look around carefully for clues. You know, it sure is strange that all the corn in the other field is drooping, but Farmer Patrick Pig's corn is standing tall and straight. Is that another mystery, Huckle? I guess so, Sally. But right now, we have a where did all the water go mystery to solve. Where did all the water go? Hmm. Aha. I think I know what happened to all the water in the swimming hole. And why Patrick Pig's corn isn't drooping like all the other corn. Hi, kids. What can I do for you? Well, we were wondering if you used the water from our swimming hole to water your cornfield. Oh, I guess I did. But what you call a swimming hole is really my irrigation pond. Your what? Irrigation pond. That's what it's called. It's a pond that holds the water until I need it to water my crops. Just like the rain barrel holds water for our flowers back home. That's right, Sally. We did it. We all helped Huckle solve the mystery of the missing water. So, Huckle, how did you figure it out? Well, Goldbug, here's how we did it. 
first, we noticed a metal pipe at the bottom of the swimming hole. We followed that pipe, which led us to Farmer Patrick's field. Then we noticed that the corn in another field was drooping, but Farmer Patrick's corn was standing straight and tall. That made me think that Farmer Patrick must have used the water from the swimming hole to water his corn. So we asked him, and he did. Our swimming hole is actually his irrigation pond. How do you feel now that you've solved the mystery? I feel hot, Goldbug. Hot and droopy, and I really need a swim. I know. Why don't we go home and run through the lawn sprinkler? It's not big enough to water a cornfield, but it's big enough to water us off. What do you think, Hucko? I think it's cool, Loli. Real cool. The Forgotten Fire Hose Mystery. Sally, wait up! Hi, Hucko! This is for you! Really? For me? How nice! Hiya, Sally! <laughs> Lowly? <laughs> <laughs> you sure fooled me! Hi, kids. Hey, hey watch your water. water. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, sorry. Uh, help! Help! Uh, help! Ah. Ah. Hey, hey, watch it. Help! Uh, help! What's going on? What's going on? Help! Oops, <laughs> sorry again. What's the emergency, Charles? There's a giant snake on the loose. It's in the park, and it's scaring everybody. A giant snake? <laughs> I hate snakes. Not as much as I hate snakes. Can you get rid of a giant snake? Yes, we can. Smoky, sparky, snozzle, and squirty, ready for duty. Firefighters to your stations. Ooh, ow, 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 ow. <laughs> Pardon me. It hurts. <laughs> Equipment checklist. Helmets. Check. Red light. Check. Siren. Check. Fire hose. <gasps> There's no fire hose. Huh? No fire hose? Oh, we can't go after that snake without our hose. You can't? Nope. It's a fire station rule. We can't answer a call unless we're fully equipped. The snake will have to wait until we find our fire hose. We had it this morning. Where could it be? Ooh. Hmm. A missing fire hose. Well, that sounds to me like... A mystery! A mystery that we will solve so you can go and catch that giant snake. Right, team? Right! Busy Town Action Bug News! Goldbug here at the fire station with the hottest news in town. What's the buzz in Busy Town, Huckle? The firefighters need their fire hose. Without it, they can't catch the giant snake. Ooh, that doesn't sound good. It isn't. The fire hose was here this morning, but now it's missing. We're going to find it and solve the missing fire hose mystery. Ready for it? Here goes. <gasps> friends are hot on the trail of the missing fire hose. Will they find it? Stay tuned. Goldbug, out! Well, goodbye and good luck. What does the fire hose look like exactly? It's very, very long, it's gray, and it has a shiny nozzle at the end. And you're sure it's not here? Ooh. 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 
positive. Okay, let's think. Did you leave the station today? Yep. We went out on two calls today. Where'd you go first? Well, we went to Mr. Frumble's house to get his hat down from a tree. Thank you. Hmm. Maybe you left the hose there. Let's go to Mr. Frumble's house and look for it. Right, Sally. Come on, everybody. Would you like a ride on the fire engine? <gasps> yeah! To Mr. Frumble's house. Hi, Mr. Frumble. We're looking for the fire hose. Is it here? The fire hose? Nope, I haven't seen a fire hose anywhere around here. Aw. We better keep looking. Where else did you go today? Just to the park. The park? That's where the giant snake is. Be careful if you go there. I heard the snake is very long and gray, and it's jumping out of the bushes at people. Jumping out at people? Um, I don't think the hose is at the park. We don't need to go there. But it has to be there. That's the only other place the firefighters went today. Let's go! <laughs> Where'd the water go? So where did you go in the park? Well, we were answering a fire alarm call near the fountain. All four of us held the hose to put out the blaze. Only it wasn't a fire. It was the green bug's barbecue. Why did all four of you have to hold the hose? Well, when the water runs through the fire hose, oh, it really jumps around. It takes all four of us to hold it steady. Okay, then. Was that the last time you remember having the hose? Yes, at the picnic area near the fountain. Then the hose must be there now. Come on! Nobody's allowed in because of the snake. Uh, we can't go in? Ah, uh, too bad. But we have to go in. That's where we think the hose is, and the firefighters need their hose before they can catch the snake. Believe me, you don't want to go in there. The snake is huge. I saw it myself. Why are you wet? It was the snake. It jumped out of a bush and spit water at me. It spit water? Can snakes do that? Oh, this one can. You're as wet as the green bugs were today, after we squirted them with the hose. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Sergeant Murphy, what did the snake look like? Let's see. It was long, gray, and had a shiny head. And the missing fire hose is long? gray and has a shiny nozzle. And when water shoots out of the hose, it jumps around, right? That's right. And the snake jumped at you, right? It sure did. I know where the fire hose is. And I can get rid of the snake. You can? You can? You can? Goldbug here with a busy town news flash. Huckle is going to face the giant snake but I need to go into the park to do it. Uh-uh. No can do. Oh, I see. Yes, Huckle, you can go in and take care of that snake. And we'll all go in with you. Are you sure about this, Huckle? Yup. Come on. Oh, do we have to go in? 
No, you can stay here if you like. Did you see that, folks? Huckle has bravely defeated the giant water squirting snake. Busy Town is safe once again. How did you do it, Huckle? Well, Goldbug, here's how I figured it out. First, we thought that the hose might be at Mr. Frumble's house. Then the firemen remembered that they had used the hose at the park earlier that day. Sergeant Murphy told us that the snake in the park was long and gray with a shiny head. The fire hose is long and gray, too, and it has a shiny nozzle. That's how I figured out that the snake was really the fire hose. And they left the water running, so it was jumping around and spraying water. You did it, Hucko! Mystery solved! Everybody all together solved a mystery with Hucko. You can solve one, two. Hooray, Hooray for, for Hucko! I couldn't have done it without my mystery solving team. Thanks, guys. Ah! I wasn't afraid. Yes, you were. Ah! Yeah! Uh. <laughs> 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 